Have you ever wished you could tag along while I do an irrigation inspection and repairs? Now's your chance. In this video, I'll show you how I work through it by creating documentation and my step-by-step -step process. This is the debut of my new inspection series. This particular inspection will be done in two parts, but I know you won't want to wait a week for the second part, so I've posted them both at once, so you'll learn this in a cohesive manner. Part one will be the inspection, and part two will be the repairs. I had two hours of recording time on this job, but I have whittled it down significantly for you. This day was windy, and I didn't own a wireless mic at the time, so I've done the best I can to reduce the wind in the editing. In future inspection videos, I'll have a wireless mic and be more prepared for the wind. Okay, let's get started. So when I, when I get on a job like this and I need to know what the different station numbers are, um, I gotta document all this. This is, this is documentation on another job that I did earlier today. This is the house, their house flower beds out in front they have no lawn anymore this is the garage i show where the timers are there's two timers and then i noted in the val different valve boxes the valves the color of the wires which i don't always do but in this case we needed to because we were having to do some deciphering and then i numbered which wire was which um, as far as the colors go so i've got timer a so i got a5 a3 over here we got B2 for the timer B and then the associated paper that goes with it. Timer A, south timer I note. What kind of timer it is, the model number, where it is, where it is in the garage and the date code. This gives me an idea of which timer model era it is. And then we have the station numbers and whether it's front or back and some more specifics. Now I always use compass directions on it, south, north, whatever, because uh, sometimes people write Fred's bedroom. Well, I don't know who Fred is and I don't know where his bedroom is and things change. People move and all that. So, And then I also put uh, what time it comes on and the days of the week that it comes on. So all that gets noted in here along with other valve location information and all that. Person's name, address, date. So we're going to empty the clipboard of that info. And I keep good graph paper, laser cut stuff. I went to, went to a popular uh, chain of office supplies a few months ago. Got the only graph paper they had, and it was cheapo stuff, and I hated it. It wouldn't tear right, so make sure you get quality stuff. I actually got this on Amazon. So we start with getting the knee pads on. The main reason I got uh, these knee pads was to help clean, keep my pants clean. Obviously, it helps keep about, keep me out of the mud somewhat. Um, these are gel filled. You can get those on Amazon. It is more comfy. So what we need for just the basics that we're going to do right at the moment is just a pair of pliers, which I have linked below. So here we've got our well, booster pump and here's the booster pump here. That's the pump, the well pump. And this thing is running at about 90 psi, which is way higher than. I normally see, usually they're right around 40 to 50 pounds, 
and then from here the water's heading off that direction to the house I'm guessing oh no that's coming from the well and then this goes over and we have that's going to irrigation piping that way and this shuts it off here and they do have a filter here which is way out of the ordinary and then we've got these three sprinkler valves with a filter on the drip line these other two are lawn lines and you can see this thing's leaking under here we can't necessarily blame that on well water so if I shut this water off here going to this set of sprinkler valves here and that's accumulation from the well water see all that limestone or whatever it is it's been leaking out this he says has only been here a couple of years but I know reality maybe five years or whatever but we can you can see this discoloration in there See all this gunk that's accumulated? He's never cleaned this out. All that should be, all this is gonna need to be rinsed out. This isn't too bad, but still, how much got past it? Okay, we're gonna rinse this out. See all the gunk that came out of there? You can see where it's been leaking out of here. So that is a 150 mesh stainless steel screen that's in there and you usually can get replacements for those the plastic ones just they uh, in the corrosive well water they they disintegrate yeah you can see how it's leaking right here the washers that come with a lot of items are plastic cheapies you know the that come with your hose or your spray nozzle that goes on your hose. What you want is good rubber washers. That's what's going to last and seal well. So just because something's leaking doesn't mean that it needs to be tightened. And if it's a hose thread item like this is, Putting Teflon tape on here isn't the answer either. We're just going to replace that washer and make sure that it's snug when we're done and that should solve the problem. And there's a... These tabs go on the high side of the threads. They help hold that washer in place. So you just gotta make sure those tabs are all down as far as they can go. So that's all flush. And we're only gonna make this snug. We're not gonna crank it down tight because that can cause something to crack. So that's good right there. Now let's see if that solved the problem. No leak. No leaky. Good to go. Okay, on to the next thing. And we're not going to turn these on right at the moment. We're going to do that from the timer in a little bit. But I'm going to give you a tour of the uh, some of the issues out in the yard.
So up here we see um, this is a Hunter MP rotator nozzle and as I've discussed on the MP rotator um, on the video about rotary nozzles this is not a good one to have on a well system because the ports on the nozzle are so small that I guarantee you it's going to clog so this isn't good and and he said that these aren't these are barely working so I'm sure that the screens are clogged on this on these nozzles so we're going to take a look at that in a little bit See the effects of the sprays not working properly with all these dry areas in the lawn. Over here we see all this water that's accumulated and how fast the grass has been growing. That's because of the uh, The way this was put in, they put in a ball valve underneath the inlet side of this sprinkler valve. We're going to turn that on. And you can hear the water. You can hear the water bleeding through. That's because the diaphragm is kind of right out there. So because of that, all that is from the all this in here is from the uh, head up there at the top, bleeding, bleeding out, and causing all this monkey mess in here. Over here in the distance, we've got same thing. We have another valve that's over here that we're going to look at. So out here, we see all that grass is growing faster too because of the water that's been bleeding through the valve and leaking at the lowest head out there. Same thing over here. So now we're going to go look at the sprinkler valve. So I'm listening for water bleeding through the valves. Sounds it's kind of like a hissing sound. It appears to be this one here. So we can bring that in and so you can uh, hear it. At the moment it seems like that's the only one. And then these are all and then on this system back, back here we're running Hunter PGPs, the rotor sprays. Um, you'll probably not find those clogged too often because the ports on them are so large that the whatever debris just blows out with the water. It doesn't usually clog. There is a screen down inside of it, but it doesn't clog very often. And over here, So you see here we have an issue here with the valve sticking on. And so this is the timer that we're dealing with, the Hunter Pro C timer. And on this we're going to put in a, a smart port so that I can use my remote control device while I'm working around here. And one of the things I wanted to point out, especially in rural areas, um, you really want to make sure that you have this hole here plugged and I'll show you how to do that um, so that we don't have spiders getting in here or other critters. I've seen hornets and stuff like that nesting in here making a mess or making it dangerous for you to get in here and work. This card here is what goes inside the door and, it, and you write the location of whatever areas are being watered by these different station numbers. Unfortunately, this was written in Sharpie. Um, I always put a note here on my cards to make sure you use pencil only 
so that you can always make changes later on but that's not what happened here and you can tell this has been left open uh, the store has been left open because it's all washed out so I'm gonna have to rewrite all of this and on the back we have uh, basic instructions on how to program it and how to operate it manually it's just velcro holding that on so this this is my setup for um, installing this smart port on in the timer so that I can use the remote control setup here just need a Phillips head screwdriver the smart port which in the in the computer system it's usually a Rome WH which is wire harness so anyway we're gonna go install this so that I can go around and uh, turn on each of the stations remotely from the from here um, normally we have the timers at eye level this is not eye level I'm having to get on my knees this makes it inconvenient for whoever's operating including the owner because they're going to be less likely to change the programming throughout the year and stuff like that if it's inconvenient. I was at a place yesterday where the sprinkler timer was installed under the kitchen sink. There's no way somebody's going to be willing to operate that thing very often if it's under the sink or in the closet or something. So we're going to install this smart port here. Let's get it out of the bag first. It's nice that they're in these Ziploc bags, but I don't know why they do this because you only use the bag once. <laughs> once the once the smart port's out of it, you can use it for something else. I repurpose these once in a while. Okay, we don't know what's going to come on first, so we're just going to hit number one and hope we're in the right place. We were in the right place. So we have one head going. Where do we don't have more? I'm going to look around. Uh, at, at some point, we're going to check each one of these valves, and we're going to we're going to mark down which valve is which for which station. Well, where, but it's just one. Not necessarily the end of the story, but uh, so far it looks like there's just one head on that one valve. That's weird. So we're going to go to number two after we mark down. Hunter Pro C in back patio on south wall. And I'll look at the date code when I get back to it. And we're going to put down one, two, three, four, five, six. I think another thing that we note how many wires are connected inside the timer. And we, I saw that there's one through nine. So we're going to assume that nine are actually active. This is the back lawn. I don't normally do this, but it was a weird situation, so I'm just going to say next to middle valves. Um, I'm going to note here that we only have one, and I'm going to circle that. That's going to show me that there's one head on that line, and we're going to note that it's a PGP. If there's uh, things to fix on it, then I note that out here. Normally I have more room to write. So we're going to go to number two. And we have one, two, three. And those are, we're going to call that the center. Back lawn, C for center. And they seem to be working all right. And we'll go to three. And 
And those are the three south PGTs. We have MP, MP rotators here. So that squirting that was going on over there was an MP rotator head. And so that one's, oh my gosh, that's like a 3500 series out in the middle, it looks like. I don't know. One, two. Looks like that's all there is. So that's out, and that says uh, that other one we're going to now call South. What? Oh, Center. Those PGPs that were in the center we're going to call North Center, and these MP rotators we're going to call South Center, and there's only two of them, and they're MPs. And we need to replace, so REPL1 nozzle. So now I know we're going to uh, move on to number five. Pop-ups. Most of them are adjustables. We have a mix of Hunter adjustable and that's a standard on Rainbird nozzle. That's a Rainbird adjustable. And you see how wonky the spray is? That's because of the inferiority of those Rainbird adjustable nozzles that I talked about on my nozzle video. And you can see how messed up that one is. That's probably clogged as well. That's clogged. So we have a number of these nozzles in here that need to be cleaned out. The nozzles may be clogged. It may just be the screens that are clogged. So this is the going to call this front because it's on this side of the back fence. So we're going to call this the front north lawn. I don't have to write north or lawn because I already wrote it up at the top. We're going to do, you'll see how I do this then. I'm going to put an arrow here or dittos so we don't have to keep writing everything. Front north and this is the east side of it, east end. These, there's uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Uh, on pop ups, I just write pups. Short. And same thing, I'm gonna ditto, replace, and, and this is just possibilities, but um, one, Two, three, four, maybe five nozzles. So we'll put five nozzles here. So this this nozzle here, 
Um, I'm going to replace this because it's not an adjustable nozzle. I, I like using stationaries because they don't fall as easy. Um, but, um, but we're not getting this full arc here. You see this is a 90 degree nozzle and we're missing the left side over here. Okay, so on to number six. So here we have our empty rotators out here in the front lawn, and here's the one we showed you earlier, completely clogged. These are working. Ultimately, you want them, since we don't appear to have any in the middle, at this point it doesn't look like it. This one's, it is reaching all the way to this edge. This one, maybe, with no wind. That one is barely turning, and it appears that this line we have a valve that's not closing off all the way. This is all that high grass from that. So they're all turning. This area probably has some in the middle since they're only reaching out to the middle. So we're going to go on to number seven. Oh, I got a note on here. What? So this is front um, west lawn, and this line was the west side. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, there was just that one on the end that was not turning, right? Yep. So we'll, we'll just put one nozzle to the place. Number seven. That one's hitting the fence down there, which we don't really want to do, but with empty rotators, it may be kind of tough not with the, with the lawn going right next to it. It's spraying kind of weird. There's actually, um, there's actually ten, with a couple around the corner here. They were all turning.
right. Well, I didn't hear anything on eight. Uh, if it was a drip line, I would have heard it spitting and sputtering, pushing air out of the line. So we're going to move on to number nine. Number eight could be in the backyard. It could be the drip or something in the backyard. Nothing on nine either out here. So we're going to do a little troubleshooting at the moment. We're going to go to the valves over here by the well and turn on the valves using the remote. See which ones click on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the wire connections. Visibly everything looks fine. We're going to put these up here, not let them lay in, down on the ground. And we're just going to guess that this is 7, 8, and 9. I, I don't know at this point, but we're going to document whatever we find out. So 9, we're going to hit 9. Okay, I don't hear anything. Another thing you can do is you can put... I was holding this to feel the solenoid kick. Another thing you can do to do more than one at once is you can put a thumb and a finger on like that. So we're going to go down to number eight. Yep, it was this one here. And now we're going to, and that which is the drip line. But we don't know if that's the drip for the front or back. You would think it'd be for the front since it's out in the front yard, but there's no guarantee on that. So we're going to turn it off and verify that that was number eight. Feel it click again. Yep, I could feel it. So we're going to document that. So these are the first three valves. And this is the fence. And that's number eight. Which we know is drip so we're just going to write that here and I don't know why we didn't hear it so again it may be for the back I don't know so we're going to go to number seven that's That's the middle one. And if these were the last files we were doing, then I could do process of elimination. I know which one that is, but this is the first set of valves that we're working with. So we're going to go down to number six. And that's number six. But you can't ever assume. If you got more than one manifold, it could be number one, it could be number three, you just never know. So we've got our first set of valves. And then we're also going to note here where this this is. This is uh, next to um, pump. And then we're going to have another set of valves. We're going to leave some space for writing top and bottom. Three four and then we have another set of valves that where there's only two so those are all ready to go while we're here we're gonna um we're gonna look at the filter or the strip line Pretty clean. There's sediment down in there, but it's hardened. It's not really going to cause a problem. And this valve, the leaking here. It, uh, it may just need to be tightened here 
but we also may need to replace the diaphragm but we'll be dealing with that later let's see if we turn this on manually here I'm gonna go look out in the yard and see if we hear where it's working. doesn't appear that the valve's letting water through, so when I take that valve apart and they can clean it out and they solve the problem. Okay, so now that we have Fence is on this side, and that's number five. And we're going to guess that this one is number two. Guess wrong. Now I can't, I cannot write where it's wet, or it'll rip immediately. Fortunately, I can do that. Okay, so that's number nine. So five and nine are together. So we know one through four are over here. Nine is the back north, and we have three PGPs on it. So fortunately on the system, the heads, uh, for the most part, most of the heads are working fine. Um, we just have some valve issues. That number nine is kind of out of sequence with the rest of them because uh, the back line is one through four, and then it jumps to the front and then goes through, and then number nine is the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, probably next time I come out, I'll switch the wiring so that what is number nine now will become number five and we'll just move these here down um, in the wiring setup okay so we're going to start with number one just to make it easy Sometimes water, when you turn it off, water will dribble out of the valve, of the anti siphon cap of the one you're working with. Um, it didn't happen this time. But we're going to try number one again. Well, I'll just turn this on manually. It's not that one. This is another way. You can just turn these on manually. Now that you know what number one is, waters. Well, process of elimination, it's that one. Which is this one here. So then we'll go to number two. Okay, 
Ja. Two. Three. So here, the process of elimination, we know that the one that's left on here is number four because we've done all the others. All right, that's it for documenting. So now we know what everything is. Number eight uh, front is the front drip. So now we can just go through and do the arrow, do the arrow down to here, and then I can't write on that yet, but I'll put a ditto mark on there for long. And then the front will be ditto will be arrow here. So that's it for documentation now. Now we'll start taking these uh, troublesome valves apart. Not all of them, just the ones that are giving us trouble. And we'll clean them out. Probably replace the diaphragms in them. So here we have the final product. Again, got the name of the controller, where it is. It's in the back patio on the south wall. And we've got the station numbers listed. And then I have bracketed that manifold back by the pump, just for my own reference. The first valve is the back lawn next to the middle valves. And then we've got the north center, the south, and the south center of the back lawn. Then number five is the front north lawn on the east side. The front west lawn, that was the standard pop-ups. These were the MP rotators and then on the east side of the west lawn and then I found that number eight was actually the drip and in the part two you'll see why number eight wasn't obvious because there was a problem with the drip line and then number nine was the back lawn on the north side over here, I have how many heads were on each line and what type of heads they were. I didn't mark on those because it's the same as the first one, so it's just kind of an assumption. And then MP rotators, and I have here that we need to replace one of the nozzles. The pop-ups, we need to replace possibly five. This one, one nozzle. And then here we have that this is the drip. And on this last line, there's three PGPs. And then on here, you saw as I was marking, that's the manifold by the pump. And I have that noted. And that's the fence. That line is the fence. I, I have a line on these next to each of the valves to show a reference that's the fence. This is the edge of the patio. And this is the fence next to those two over by the gate. And then I have each of them numbered. Then down here on the bottom corner, I've covered up the real names of the people, but I've just made up this information here. Um, fake name, their fake address, and the fact that it's in San Luis Obispo, and we just call that slow and the date that I did this. Sometimes I'll need to put other information on here, but on this job, that's all I need. And I'll be doing a video sometime for professionals that will go into more detail on these sheets, and I'll give a bunch of examples. Linked down below is free downloads, and one of those is this free download that you can use to document your own irrigation systems and i keep this documentation in my truck in an office box and each town has its own folder sometimes i have to break up the town into several different folders if i have a lot 
um, because I need to be able to find these quickly so I don't want to have to be sorting through 30 to 50 sheets in a folder. So if a town is big enough, I have enough clientele in it, then I'll break that down into uh, different parts of town to make it quicker and easier. And I usually make these available to the clients as well, so they can photocopy it for themselves. Uh, most of the time, they just take a photo with their phone, but I encourage them to download that to their computer and put it in a file folder um, on their computer for their landscaping or their irrigation system. And I update these as needed. That's one reason I do it in pencil. Each time I go back, if I make changes, then I note that on here. So that's the end of part one. Part two, I'll be showing you the repairs that I did on this system. Hope that was helpful. I'll be doing some more inspections that will be shorter and we'll show you different scenarios running into different situations. Thanks for watching. Thank you.